In this video, we're gonna talk about Vue's portable virtual production solution, the Vue One Mini. Real quick, you're watching VP Land. Special thanks to our sponsors, Blackmagic, Vue, and Lucidlink for helping make our NAB coverage possible. And now, back to the video. I'm here with Tim from Vue. Tim, good to see you again. Yeah, thanks uh, So we've got the Vue One Mini. I know we saw an early version of this, but this looks, we got the lights. Tell me what we got going on here. Yeah, so this is our all-in-one virtual production solution. It's got integrated lights, integrated camera tracking, fully retractable, it goes up to almost 10 feet tall, and it's 12 feet wide. But the best part is it's on wheels, so you can retract it down, make it through a, an eight-foot commercial door, and uh, it can go with you on the road, so. And what type of content, what type of videos have you been seeing people make with it, and what sort of, I guess, what did you originally have in mind? Well, we saw that the trend was studios over time were getting smaller and smaller, you could do so much more and less of a footprint. Uh -huh. And so we used to build 100 foot studios, then 50 foot, then 20 foot. Now this is the optimal size we've noticed a lot of people want. And um, we've seen that this gets, you know, a lot of the podcasts, two person stand up talking, one person scenes, uh, small product shots, so a variety of different use cases, but uh, you know, just using this one wall. And what's the thought with the lights on the side and how is that interacting? Well, what's cool about this is this pixel map. So right now there's a scene from uh, YouTube on here, but if I change it or if I adjust it, you'll see these um, lighting bars will actually emit light on us. And uh, that's nice because a lot of times the magic trick is how do you make it appear like the actors are in the scene and that lighting really helps. Right, and have the lighting from the environment on us. Can you connect other lights and have it integrate with the system? You can, so uh, what we're using is CRMX. Uh, you can use any five pin DMX as well. Okay. So uh, any lights that you wanna add to it, up to 512 lights. That's a good amount of lights. <laughs> yeah. And how does that, if you're bringing up the image now, I mean, does it have to be a 360 image or um, like? No, so it's really any multimedia. Like I was showing before, if we went to a YouTube link, um, it would take the values from YouTube and you see kind of the peach over there. It's actually adjusting with the, with the fire. Okay. And then you can choose the points where it's at. So like in this one, we're choosing different regions. If I uh, took something like this, you know, it takes the purple from over there, the blue from over here. And if we had additional lights, we could kind of be like, I want this to have that purple glow from this light. Exactly. This, the blue. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah. And then tell me about the uh, camera tracking that we've got integrated in the frame. Yeah, so this is an active optical uh, camera tracking. There's active markers inside that are uh, sending us infrared signal. And then the optical sensor, uh, because it's always a known size, you never have to calibrate it. So the optical sensor, the second you turn it on, you're tracking. Okay, because I know as the screen's always built, it's the same size. And then how does that work with the camera? Do we have to put something on our, on our camera? Yep, it takes a small um, a receiver on there and uh, it's very lightweight. Most of the processing happens at the computer. The camera is just, uh, you know, broadcasting its position, and it's a really great workflow. If you've ever done camera tracking before, in the past it was bulky, it was difficult. Now this makes it a lot easier. And then what? I mean, we're looking at 2D images right now. How does how do you integrate with what? Like, what kind of environments can you bring in, and how does that work to? Yeah, what's cool to, is to, to match once it? you turn into a 3D depth map, you can extrude it. And one of the challenges that we have with perspective is getting the horizon line to match. So let's say your floor needed to be extruded out. This is a great way to, depending on what your camera angle is, you can make it look wider or tighter. And this is all derived from a 2D image, but it allows us to really go all the way out. That's why, okay. And then it would sync with our camera. So if we're moving our camera, our perspective would, would shift. Yeah. And so this is sort of like a 2.5D-ish effect. What could you bring in a 3D? The advantage to the 3D depth map is because it's not layer based and not segmented, when you turn with it, it's distorting. And so you're seeing the angles. Um, you'll also notice here when I zoom all the way out, this sky is because we're actually in a 3D game engine. So you'll see I'm adjusting the time of day here. There's the sun. Oh, okay. So um, this 3D scene exists in a 3D game engine but we abstract it. So the user just, all they have to do is slide a couple buttons, but they're actually doing the same workflow as if you were in Unreal Engine and fully doing the scene. But now just a couple of buttons, really fast, really easy. That's awesome. Can you bring in, if you have a 3D space or a 3D model, can you bring, can you bring you those can. in? We just added a pixel streaming function. So any 3D game engine or packaged game, uh, you can host it online and then play it directly in here. Okay, that's yeah. awesome. 
Uh, all right, so we got camera tracking. What else do we have here on the, and this is the View Studio, right? It is, yeah. So you'll notice the blue lights here. Um, if I go to my lighting, the newest feature is the pixel mapping. Mm -hmm. So when it's enabled, um, it'll, it'll chase these. Uh, when you have it disabled, you can go through traditional lighting. So like, let's say I'm gonna make this one red over here. Actually, I'll do this one so you can see it. I'll go ahead and make this one red. Okay. Go to blue. So really easy sliders. If you want to change the saturation, you can bring that to full white. All the way to here. Uh, we've got strobe in here if you want that. Temperature control. That's awesome. I know we talked about this before in the old previous video, but is uh, pricing wise for the, the setup that we're looking at here? Yeah, so this starts at 99,000 um, and it's all in one. You get everything okay. with it. Does that include the tracking and the, and the, it the does. white parts? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's awesome. And what are you, the bigger picture, so we have this kind of portable uh, VP kit. What kind of trends are you seeing in virtual production now, 2025 in general? Well, the big thing, like we were talking about earlier, small is the new big. You could do more with less. And so we're seeing a lot of people, uh, you know, getting smaller walls, but smarter studios. So we think the future of studios is you just give intent and then everything is orchestrated. So uh, with our intent engine, this is our view.ai, we're moving that to be the control surface of the future. And that's the big trend I see is how many things can you orchestrate from just one person? Yeah, exactly. so something more about also your AI, because you have a runway partnership, right? Mm -hmm. And we so do. how is that, not runway specifically, but AI in general, how are you fitting that into your workflow and where do you see that going? Well, it's huge. So we just got off a show with Amazon House of David. They're number one on streaming right now for Amazon. Uh, they are using a very large AI workflow. And it's for the first time in a big series like that, um, they're taking the original uh, photography from the first season and using that as the reference images for the second season. So now they're able to make these worlds, generate them, take them from image to video, and uh, virtual production is a great way to do that because if you can generate a thousand uh, different characters as your army in the background, now you can do things on a much different budget, you know, to a much bigger scale. So, um, you know, uh, our AI workflow is very simple. It's for the user that wants to be able to quickly create content at the speed of thought, as fast as they type it in, they can get it to the screen. Yeah. And so, um, but as far as AI in the production workspace, I think, you know, the cat's out of the bag and it's gonna continue to be a really big theme going forward. And that is it for this video. Thanks again to our sponsors for helping make our NAB coverage possible. And for more of our NAB videos, be sure to check out the playlist right here. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next episode.